Hello and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to get started with setting up NeoVim for your Unreal Engine development. Um, I've been meaning to move to NeoVim for a very, very long time, and unfortunately, there is no support out there. Uh, well, there was no support out there to uh, develop with Unreal Engine code. And the reason for this is um, Unreal Engine generates header files on the fly and the when you try to get syntax highlighting for that generated code in NeoVim it will not work, neither will uh, um, auto-completion. So after a long time uh, of me just just longing to move to NeoVim and not being able to because there was no support for this and I wasn't able to get any of the online solutions that existed to work. It, it was just not possible. Um, after all that time of waiting, I just decided to just do it myself. Um, I've been using this um, NeoVim setup at work as well. Uh, since I, I do work in the game dev industry uh, and I can tell you that it, it, it does everything that I need which is mainly have a very very good uh, code editor available um, and I, I have to tell you if if you want to switch from Visual Studio which is kind of industry standard to NeoVim uh, you have to understand it comes with a change of mindset and a change of workflow. So Visual Studio is a jack of all trades and master of none. And this is not to say that it's not a very good IDE. On the contrary, that there's a reason it is industry industry standard. It is very easy to use, and it it all the tools that you need during development, uh, Visual Studio kind of puts them at your fingertips. However, because of that, each and every tool that it, it makes available for you is not the most advanced or the best tool for, for, for the job. So you will eventually hit a ceiling where there is nothing more you can learn or do to optimize your development, which is part of the reason that incentivized me to move to using NeoVim instead. And I'm going to explain now. So. The editor, uh, NeoVim, it is miles ahead of um, Unreal Engine in, in terms of pure text editing efficiency. It's a philosophy change uh, of using the best tool for the job instead of one tool that tries to do it all. Uh, so editing is one thing. You will want a debugger and um, I plan on integrating WinDebug, which is arguably the best debugger that you can use for your Windows development. Uh, and also logging, I highly recommend uh, Klog, uh, which has pretty neat filtering available as well. Um, I think I'm on case sensitive. There we go. Uh, and highlighting, like you can specify your regex to colorize different lines. It's extremely powerful and really not the scope of this video, but I highly recommend you integrate it in your workflow. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to show you uh, the actual plugin. Now, um, as you can see, you have auto-completion functional for Unreal Engine source code, which is not something that you can obtain out of the box with NeoVim or even like there aren't any plugins out there available that can do that uh, aside from my own from what I can tell. Um, so you have auto completion working, you have syntax highlighting working, you have linting working. Um, as you can see it's it's uh, showcasing um, uh, any syntax errors in real time as well. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, if you want to build uh, the project, you can do so. And 
Right now it's going to ask you for which configuration you want to build. I might change that in the future. So you just switch configurations and it remembers it. And when you press build, when you run the build command, it just builds whatever current configuration you have. Uh, but for now, it's just going to ask you which configuration to build. And you can do that and you get um, a build progress visible and yeah that's it now the configuration is built you can run a real run you can run it and well, unfortunately it's starting on my other screen but I'm going to pull it up for you so it just started as you can see it's a pretty bare bone project and yeah that's pretty much it um, now I think uh, I should show you how to actually get it installed. So, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's close this. We are going to set up the whole thing from scratch so that you guys can actually see how that is done. I'm, I'm going to get rid of these. Um, Let's see. Oh, I have a command line there. Let's try again. Good. So, There are two things that you need to know, uh, and you might, or you may or may not want. To. You have two approaches available. So I've developed the Unreal NVIM plugin, and what this does is it it just purely takes care of uh, all that um, generated code from Unreal and it, it makes sure um, it is parsable by the LSP and available for your auto completion and syntax highlighting purposes. It is very bare bone and I only recommend you directly install this if you are experienced with NeoVim and with messing out messing about with NeoVim configurations and, and all that stuff. If you're just starting out with NeoVim, I highly recommend you start with the configuration itself that I put together. So this is a configuration that that, that is intended for Unreal Engine development. Um and what this gives you is it automat it, it already has out of the box pre-configured the LSP auto completion a snippets engine so you can define your own snippets uh, for the code uh, some nice themes as well uh, so it looks a bit nicer than, than barebone uh, NeoVim uh, it has a bunch of other facilities as well some familiar shortcuts like control B to build your project and F5 to run it um, things like that um, so yeah, uh, that being said, I, uh, I'm going to showcase how to install it through the configuration, like how to install the configuration, because the configuration would, will automatically pull in the plugin as a dependency. So that will get you started the quickest and the easiest. So let's do that then, shall we? Uh, we're going to open First of all, you have to um, get to your local uh, f folder. Uh, an easy way to do that is, um, where did that run window open? There we go. So an easy way to do that is to just type uh, local app data in, in your run window and it will open this folder right here. Uh, then you should open a terminal and in this terminal, you can do, um, well, you can basically check out the, the git. 
So let's see what the address for that is. So you can do, oh, I think uh, I need to put in clone over there. Get clone. And it's going to download it. So it's going to create this folder. Um, we do not want to keep this name because this is the NeoVim configuration and it needs to have the NVim folder name. But inside it, it, it has everything uh, a NeoVim needs to start up. Now, you, you might use NeoVim Qt for this. Um, so if you go to their website, you have NeoVim. Let's see. So you might use the like the original NeoVim uh, user interface, uh, which is Qt based, I believe. Uh, but what I like to use is NeoVite, and the only reason I use NeoVite is um, for the transparent background. Believe it or not, <laughs> it just looks nice. <laughs> because I have this wallpaper engine here and I kind of like to see it through my editor. Um, okay, so you can choose which one you want to do. If you don't want transparent backgrounds, you, you can just stick with the original NeoVim, otherwise just get NeoVide. Um, and then once you have this in place with the correct name, you can just um, open NeoVite or NeoVim and you're going to get some errors uh, but this is just because the plugins required for the config are not installed yet uh, they are not a concern as soon as you skip past them Packer is going to uh, pop up and start installing everything that's missing Just give it a little bit of time. And there you have it. Um, it's good to just give it a restart. And I noticed there's the, there's a little glitch here. Um, parts of it will not be transparent if you if you're really looking for like transparency. Uh, but uh, that is only until the screen clears and then yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, let me pull this away. Pull this away so we can see the nice transparent background. Very important. Uh, so yeah, um, you should have a functional um, Unreal IDE now. Uh, you can just open uh, one of your Unreal Engine source files. I already have one bound to a global mark. So I'm just going to do that. Oh, really? It says mark not set. I guess I guess I don't. So let's just um, let's just open a source file from one of the projects. Uh, error during download. Uh, tree sitter. Uh, sometimes it takes some tries for everything to install, including tree sitter. So um, I'm going to mark this and then restart. I think we can do Yes, update to make sure everything is there. 
there you go it started downloading um, yeah so it takes a few tries for some reason for everything in the configuration to get downloaded um, you'll just give it a few restarts it should be fine uh, she it already exists yeah whatever so as you can see we have everything syntax highlighted properly you have an LSP you will have autocomplete available with various like Unreal Engine methods uh, if you do shift K you can even pull up documentation for e each method like this if you want um, if you want to go to the definition of a method you can do GD and it takes you right there then control O to go back control I to go forward so control I control O back and forth um, let's get rid of this Maybe let's get rid of the whole line um, what else uh, well I think this is the crux of it. Uh, with this in place, it should set you up very nicely for Unreal. There's a few things you can do, uh, and I recommend you bind these. Uh, they are already bound, actually, um, in this configuration. So you can do Unreal build, and it starts a nice build for you. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope this will get you started nicely with Unreal Engine. Uh, drop a like, uh, maybe a comment if you really enjoy this plugin. I hope it helps you. And uh, I hope you can finally start your journey with uh, NeoVim because it is an amazing code editor and a bit unfortunate that it doesn't, it didn't have up until now a plugin to support Unreal Engine. But it does now, so I hope you guys enjoy it, and see you later. Bye-bye.